everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm trying a new kind of video for you. Um, a couple weeks ago I showed you my dream watercolor palette setup. I'm going to be using that today to create a painting. I have started a series, I've only caught one in the series so far, I'll, I'll show it to you real quick. So before Thanksgiving I painted this adorable little fox in the snow. Um, I had started off by just thinking I was going to paint a scene of snowy trees, but I felt like it was missing a subject. And so I, I took a gamble and experimented with putting a little fox in there. And I love how it turned out. I loved it so much that I want to create a series of these little woodland scenes with animals. And so today I'm doing a wolf pup. This is the first time I've actually filmed more of a, I'm not calling it a tutorial per se, cause I don't feel qualified to teach watercolor. Um, but this is kind of a come paint along with me type of video where I'm just going to show you how I create pieces. Oftentimes I have sort of a plan in mind, but a lot of my painting, at least for me, is figuring things out as I go. Basically you're going to get to watch me over my shoulder, which is a little nerve wracking for me because I'm not used to people watching me paint. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try to to recreate the snowy fox scene, but with a wolf. The brushes that I'm using today is a variety of brands. This one I actually got from Hobby Lobby, but I really like it. Um, it's a pretty decent brush and it holds a, a fairly good point. This is a 12 round. This one is by Pro Art. It's a Stephen Coates foliage brush, I believe. Um, I love it because it's great for sprinkling snow splatters. And so you can just, you know, brush it and get some really good snow splatter. That's what I'll do at the end. I also have a Princeton Velvet Touch round eight, same brand and a round four. And then these two are new brushes for me and I absolutely love them. I want to get more in this line. Not only are they beautiful with the gold tips and the black handle, but they're really great for detail. These are Pro Art Proline brushes. This is a two tenths and a four tenths brush. Um, eventually I'd like to have a full range of sizes in this brush because I, I really like it. For the white snow, I use Bleed Proof White. I love this. I actually need to get more of it soon because it's getting a little low, but it's been great for adding snow detail. I also use it when I'm painting coastal scenes for sea foam. It's, it's opaque and it's easy to work with. I love how it looks when it's dry. As for the colors on my palette, I'm planning to use for certain, I'm going to be using Lunar Blue, I'm going to use Lunar Black, probably for the wolf, and to be honest, there's probably not going to be many more colors than those two. I might add in some, which one is it? I believe it's this one, this, yeah, this is the Sodalite Genuine. So I'll probably add in some of that with the Lunar Blue to make some of the background forest a little bit darker. But I kind of like these minimal scenes. All right, so not gonna make this a tutorial. Like I said, I'm just gonna kind of tell you what I'm doing as I'm doing it. So I think what I started off with last time was I just kind of wet the background above the horizon line that I've drawn trying to avoid some of the larger branches but not worrying about it too much because my sky it was a um, it was a gradient it was mostly white but along the horizon line I added in some shadow with more lunar blue and some soda light genuine definitely want to avoid the wolf okay so now I've got the horizon line wet one of the reasons why I love this particular line of brushes I believe these are um, golden Teclon bristles they, they don't get too sopping wet. I love mop brushes, those are great, and I use those for lots of my paintings, but for a painting like this when I don't want too much water, um, Golden Taclon tends to be my favorite. So what I did last time is I just started off by painting in, and not being too fussy with the horizon line because it's snow and it's gonna be, you know, bumpy. But I uh, started off by just putting in some dark color, especially more towards the sides. And then with a damp brush, I kind of just pull it up and try to create that sense of misty foliage. 
and occasionally you want to kind of clean off your brush so that you're not pulling up too much paint because I do want to have white up at the top. See how it's creating a really pretty misty snow effect? And what I want to do is create kind of a highlight around the wolf and so if you notice it's darker over here and less dark over here. Okay so while this is wet I'm also going to add in some of the so light genuine. So I want to create some deeper shadows. And I'm, I'm trying to avoid my trees, but I'm not being too fussy about it because they're also going to be blue, so it doesn't really matter too much. If you notice lunar blue, it goes on dark, but it dries pretty light. So you have to use a little more than you think you do. Adding just a bit more. This is called a wet and wet technique where, <clears throat> excuse me, where you're working with a little more water on your brush and wet paper. You notice I'm kind of keeping the soda light towards the bottom and that's going to create the effect of like denser ground foliage. Okay, I think that's pretty good. The paint's slightly dry, so it's not super wet, but I want to just kind of dampen the edge a little bit because I don't want there to be a hard a hard line on the horizon. I want the snow to kind of have a bluish shadowy effect. And so I'm just taking a damp, clean brush and just kind of softening the edge and trying to like, you know, bring down some of that color just slightly, just to kind of tint the white of the paper a little bit. You probably won't even be able to see it in the video, but you will be able to notice, probably, see how that horizon line's looking really soft and misty now? That's exactly what I wanted to do. The timing on that is kind of crucial. You don't want to do it when the paint is still really wet, otherwise you'll create blooms because it'll have back runs. But if it's slightly damp, then it'll work perfectly because once it gets too dry, it won't move at all and you want it to just move ever so slightly downward, just like it is here. Okay, so now I'm gonna let that totally dry before I start painting in some background trees. Back now, the paper is pretty dry, so I think I'm gonna start by getting my round four and taking a little bit of that lunar blue, just adding in some, some background foliage. I kind of like to either wet it to mess it up or when I do lines like I try not to like like I make like intermittent lines almost so that it doesn't look completely in focus. You don't want it to be too perfect. Details tend to come forward and so the less detail you have pushes it further back into the picture. I think another thing I'm going to do is take my foliage brush and wet it and I'm going to get some soda light and just kind of like make the appearance of bushes almost. See how that instantly adds a kind of vignette? Now I'm going to start going in with the trees and the way I did this last time was I kind of went back and forth between the bigger trees and the smaller trees. The bigger the tree got, the less dark I made it. Um, so it gave kind of a neat contrast between fuller, more dimensional trees and some contrast with the, with the darker trees. This is one of those parts in painting when you just kind of have to let, let your mind go a little bit. You just kind of get lost in making the patterns. So I'm mixing the, if you can, yeah, you can't see on here. I'm mixing some soda light and lunar blue to get this kind of color here. I'll show you. And then one thing I do after I put in a tree is I get my brush just ever so slightly damp and just kind of soften the bottom part a little bit to kind of anchor it into the snow. Nothing 
It's very, very subtle. Hopefully you can see that on camera. Some of the trees are going to go all the way to the top out of the frame. Some of them won't. My trees are never done in one pass. Always go back in. Adjust things. Add more dimensionality. Since my light source is focused on the middle, I am making the right side of this tree lighter. It's a very relaxing part of the painting, painting trees. I'm going to go in with a bigger brush now and paint one of these larger trees. around eight. I love these brushes because they also get a really good point. Okay, I'm liking how that scene is looking. I think I want to add in some more really skinny, really dark trees. And I'm also needing to add in some more branches. I'm trying to create that misty effect. And so by having those open lines and then just faintly connecting them with a damp brush kind of helps create that sense of we've got almost a fog going on back here. I'm trying to think compositionally where I might want another one of these, but I think... Hmm. I kind of think if I had another one, it might detract from the wolf, so I'm going to think about that. And I'm going to go in with my four-tenths brush, or no, my two-tenths. I want it to be a little bigger. Pick up some sodalite start going in with some finer detail branches. You'll notice most of my trees are kind of going inward and that's intentional because I kind of want to create create a wide angle perspective. When I'm doing photography I love wide angles like that. I'm kind of messing up this tree a little bit because it almost looks too perfect and I want it to kind of fade away into the fog. So I kind of want it to be a little wet. detail where I feel like it's lacking and I just realized I forgot to soften those tree edges. So I think now what I want to do is take my four and get some dry brush stuff going on. on a tree I'll just get a little bit of water to kind of mess up some of it so that it doesn't look too perfect. you notice I'm focusing the dry brush on the shadow side of the trees. This part is so relaxing because it's just filling in branch details. Not really thinking too hard about it, just kind of going with my intuition.
Okay, now I'm gonna let this totally dry before I go in and paint the wolf because I'm gonna have my fist over there. And so I wanna make sure that these are totally dry. Okay, so you can see I've added just a tiny bit of foliage to the trees and I felt like it just added a little bit of, um, I don't know, depth. And I can just imagine there being some lingering stubborn leaves clinging to these trees or maybe even like, you know, some some evergreen ivies that have kind of like grown up into the into the trees so so now it's time to pull in these little brushes here and maybe this one so what I'm doing right now is I'm getting some lunar black and I'm really diluting it to make it a really soft gray you can see on my sketch I've got a few places where I've shaded in some shadows and so I'm starting there and I'm gonna add in the black wherever I've sketched shadow and then what I'll do is go back in and soften it and kind of spread it out to create some dimension to the wolf's body. That's actually really good right off the bat. Um, not to brag on myself, uh, but I like how that's looking. So I'm just going to kind of build up some more details here. It's just a little pause. Adding in some shadow details. I am just experimenting and hoping for the best and hoping that the worst doesn't happen. <laughs> it looks so cute. Um, okay, so I think now I'm to the point where I want to stop, let this dry, and then I'm going to add in the snow, which is going to be messy. <laughs> um, but for that part, I'm going to have to change my water out because it's very icy blue at the moment and I don't want to contaminate the white. So, um, yeah, I'll come back. Okay, so there are two parts to this. One is the really fine splatter, and then the other is adding in bigger splatters. So what I'm gonna do, yeah, this is getting really low. This is a matter of trial and error, how wet you want this brush and how much paint you want on it. It creates a sense of like falling, dusty, blizzardy snow, and I just, I love it. I'm actually gonna move my palette out of the way because I don't wanna get white all over my paints. I just I love this effect. I like to try to kind of also like concentrate it in certain places so that it gives the appearance of blowing snow. Okay, so now I'm going to do some splatter. So this one, I'm noticing that the splatter is not any smaller or any bigger than the foliage brush I just used. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this brush and just randomly without thinking, drop in some bigger white blobs. You know when snow's falling kind of heavily, you'll have like big clumps, I guess, of flakes. And so I'll put those here and there and kind of vary the sizes. The next step is to kind of add in little lines of snow on the branches just, just to give the idea that it's kind of collecting, collecting in places like that. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is kind of do some dry brush, snowy dry brush. on the tree trunks to make it look like it's kind of clinging to them down low. So the paper that I'm using is not pure white. There's kind of warmth to it. And so this bleed proof white is really sticking out prominently. And so what I'm going to end up doing is probably brushing on some snow to make it look white and then using that darker color 
to kind of act as shadows. I'm gonna take that white, kind of drag it down too. Okay, so I'm not gonna know how much got lost until I'm editing. Um, but my memory card got full and I didn't realize it, so some of it probably got missed. But one of the last things that I was saying was that I feel like I'm at the point now, if I do any more, it's going to look overworked. And so I don't want to do that. Um, I think the only thing that I'm going to add here is just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of shadow. I think this is good. I like how this turned out. I think as I go over here to add more shadow. <laughs> I think it turned out really cute. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of my painting process. You can see it's just kind of experimental. I don't totally know what I'm doing whenever I set out because I'm self-taught. I don't know what things are gonna do and um, how it's all gonna work out. But I usually uh, like the result a lot better if I do experiment and don't try to plan it too much. So there you go. I hope that you enjoyed this video and wherever you are, I hope you have a restful day or night and I will see you next time. Bye.